Hello and welcome to the mountain, which means of course we're at Cadwell Park for round 10 of the Motorcycle News British Superbike Championship. Now I'm joined as usual by Barry Nutley and Steve Parrish. Steve, the crowds love it here, you've ridden it, what do the riders make of it? They also like it, it's very dramatic, trying to get up this hill with 180 horsepower. The front wheel comes up, the rear wheel comes up, but you've got to get that rear wheel down on the track to drive down to the next corner. So you've really got to go slow to go fast. Sounds daft, but it's the only thing that really works. Never mind riding up, but I don't think I could even walk up it. Barry, you like it here. Yeah, and the crowds love it, Craig, and that's why they flock here in their thousands. Cadwell's probably one of the biggest circuits in terms of spectators live on the whole calendar. The reason why, because it's like a club circuit feel. They can get close to the action. They absolutely love it. Steve Hislop currently leading the championship, 19 points clear of his nearest rival, Sean Emmett. But there's still 200 points up for grabs. This is going to go all the way, isn't it? It could do, but with a double win here last year, Hislop's going to be a very difficult man to beat, barring problems. Do you think that Sean Emmett can still challenge Steve Hislop? Well, it's obviously difficult changing from the Ducati to the Yamaha. He's got to relearn the bike, relearn some of the circuits with that bike. So it's going to be hard, there's no question about it. But don't forget Michael Rutty. He's getting stronger and stronger as the season goes on. Had a few problems, but he's really coming good now. OK, well, I think maybe it's time you showed us around. What do you think? I'll try my best. Cheers. Well, this is on board a Ducati over the start and finish line, the second fastest part of the circuit. 150, down three gears into Coppice Corner, a long uphill left hand, and then it flicks right here, staying in third gear, coming out of this corner, which is Charlie's two. Very, very important to get on the power as you come out of there, a bit of a slide down the hill. Now, this is the fastest part of the circuit, up into sixth gear, 165 before there, slamming the brakes on. Right the way down into second gear for Park Corner, coming out of here in second, and a short shift up into third quickly for Chris Curve. This goes on forever, this corner, and you hold it on the rev limiter, on the exit to this corner here now. Towards the gooseneck, there was the limiter, staying in third gear, flicking it now through here and down the hill into Mansfield. Back into second gear, easy to push the front here and slide off. It's a downhill, off camber corner now, on the power, short shift to third, then to fourth gear, up towards the mountain now and back down into second gear. There's the left-hander, and then you flick it right as it climbs up the mountain. Front wheel comes up in the air. Second gear, holding it in second now, up towards Hall Bends. Right, left coming through under the trees. It gets slippery and damp under these trees here now, down into first gear for the hairpin. Slowest corner on the circuit, 35 miles now. Quickly up into second gear, into barn corner. Coming out of here, the track just drops away. It's very easy to slide the rear end. That's the lap. In the Dunlop-sponsored Super Bowl, only three riders got under the magical 26-second barrier. Shane Byrne pushed hard. He knew that a front-row position was vital here at Cadwell Park and did everything within his power. He claimed third place on the grid. His teammate Michael Rutter knew that a good start was vital as well because his championship is still very much alive and he pushed and pushed and pushed the renegade Ducati round here. The weather for qualifying was fantastic. Rutter made the most of it. Second place was enough, but not quite enough because the quickest man was yet to go. His slot in warm-up actually did a 124.7, an unbelievable time round here, and almost equaled that in his Super Bowl time, came home with a 25.36. That was enough to give him pole position, but only just. You were saying a long time ago that you're going to make Cadwell yours. I love Cadwell. I love Cadwell and Open Park. They're old fashioned, um, maybe a bit like me. They're old fashioned rider circuits, and I feel my bike's working every bit the way it should. And I, I, w I would love two wins tomorrow. Confirmation of that stunning pole position by Steve Hislop. Rutter, Byrne and Plater completing the front row. Reynolds heads off row two from Sean Emmett, defending second place in the championship. Row three led by Glenn Richards, Gary Mason, Harrison Burr and John Crawford back in form again on the Suzuki, heads off row four. Well, there are grey skies over Cadwell, but it has been declared a dry race. Everyone's on slicks, although about half an hour ago, I went for a spin in the safety car and up in the trees there at Hairpin and Barn. Very slippy. In fact, one of the marshals took a bit of a run and he must have slid about 10 feet. So that's what they've got to put up with today. Now, look at that. 
a very happy Steve Plater. This is his home circuit. Maybe he had a premonition about today's race. Maybe he knew this was going to be his first time on the front row of the grid. No, I have plenty of funny dreams, in all fairness, but nothing like that. <laughs> You like it here, though, don't you? Yeah, I love the place to bitch, you know. It's uh, got a bit of all sorts, but obviously qualifying's one thing and Super Bowl's not, not usually a strong point for me, but uh, we've been getting better as the season's been going on and uh, pretty good here, fourth on the front row, which is more important than anything, and just want to repeat that in the race, really. OK, well, thanks for that, Steve. The rest of your front row, Shane Byrne, Michael Rutter and Steve Hislop. Of course, Steve Hislop hoping for another double win here. So over to your commentary team of Steve Parrish and Barry Nutley. Well, race one at Cadwell, but this is race 19 of the 26 race calendar in the 2002 Motorcycle News British Superbike Championship. And the front row all very focused, as indeed is the entire field. They're all safely away. They run up then towards the left-hander of Coppice, healing into Coppice. And it was one of the renegade Ducatis getting a good start at Shaky Burn. Number eight, Shane Byrne, leads from championship leader Steve Hislop with the yellow helmet. It's very much a Ducati circuit here, but having said that, in third place, the number four Virgin Mobile Yamaha of Steve Plater. Front row start for Plater, and he's used it to great effect, but into park for the first time. Shane Byrne, Hislop in second, Plater in third. Reynolds in fourth on the Rizla Suzuki, the reigning champion, number one, John Reynolds, followed by Michael Rutter. It was very much going to be about these. A good ride as well by Simon Crafer. He is there as well. He's right on the back wheel of Emmett. Sean Emmett now on the Yamaha. 19 points adrift of Hislop's championship lead. Knows he's got a fight on his hands today. But Steve, your namesake Hislop is really going to deliver the goods here. Well, he is, but tricky conditions still as they come up over the mountain. Look at those front wheels pouring the air. As they come now through here, as Craig said, under the trees, it does get a little damp and slippery. There is a dry line, but you don't have to go far off it. We've had some drizzle here this morning. Shane Byrne, number eight, leads. Steve Hislop, number two, I'm sure will be happy to sit there until this race gets well underway and the track dries even more. Hislop has been outstanding in all the qualifying sessions, but look at Plater, body movement there on that Yamaha. He's got himself buried under the screen as they come over the start and finish line. And there you can see some damp patches still on the circuit. Well, Shane Byrne, first season on a Ducati on the Performance House Suzuki last year, jumped onto the big V-twin and has really clicked with it. Look, he leads this race, something like eight machine lengths. Then it's his stop. There's Plater. Reynolds then making a move on Steve Plater for third place. Is he going to make it stick? No. Plater switched across to the outside of the circuit and closed the door for John Reynolds. There was no way through. Michael Rutter in fifth place, the number six renegade Ducati rider coming to your picture now. Michael Rutter cannot let them get away. He's got to stay in touch. 18 laps this race, 39 miles the distance, at the gooseneck, and the pace car is on the track. We have a faller somewhere on the circuit. The car is out for safety reasons, and there's the faller. Yeah, that's Dean Thomas down, and that's Hall Ben, so he's down and out of this race as the guys all go around trying to keep their tyres warm as they follow that pace car around as Dean Thomas looking pretty much OK, maybe a shoulder injury there, the way he's holding his arm as they come round out of it. The lights are out on the pace car, so away they go to re-continue this race. Green flag there and away it goes and it's still Shane Byrne, Hislop in second place and Steve Plater there in third, up through this fast left-hander there into Charlie's now, Charlie's one there, Charlie's two. It's quite bumpy this place, they've resurfaced a number of parts on this circuit and the bikes are bucking and weaving, you saw the surface change there and that's his lot in front of us, we're on board now with Steve Plater 160, 165 miles down there, he slams the brakes on down into Park Corner through here in second gear and generally shifting very quickly up into third, there he goes into third, all the way around Chris Curve now his lot runs a little bit wide but it's the widest part of the circuit as they come into the gooseneck here now this also has been resurfaced and the riders are complaining a little bit about the bumps as they go through the gooseneck down into mansfield corner as they come down ah and down he goes number four steve plater lost the front as he went into mansfield there looked to me like he was just hanging on to that front brake a little bit too much down he goes he's looking to the inside watch the front of that bike and there it goes just slides out and across the grass that is terrible news there for number four steve plater
Well, we had a bird's eye view of that, and that's the wreckage of the Yamaha. I don't think Plater's going to be able to continue. It goes down very, very heavily. Fortunately, Ryder without injury. So Steve Plater on home ground at Cadwell Park in front of a host of local fans is out of the running in race one here at Cadwell. That has given John Reynolds a very comfortable third place and an eye on the back of the championship leader, his arch rival, the man he chased all the way to the title and pipped him in the last round last year. Steve Hislop in second place in this race and Hislop moving up to the fastest part of the circuit on a very, very brave overtaking move around the outside into park of Shane Byrne. His slot, and this, Steve, is how cool he is. Well, that was round the outside, and that all started as he exited Charlie's corner. He had a good gear for that corner, good drive out onto the straight, and just powered his way round the outside. Stunning stuff from his lot on that unbelievably fast Monster Mob Ducati. Yeah, we've commented before, whoever screws that together, and we know it's Phil Borley, of course, the engineer in the Monster Mob camp. They really do a fantastic job. It just seems to have the edge on speed and it is oh so reliable. Hislop, the only man to score points in every single one of the championship races so far this year, now heads Shane Byrne over the mountain into all bends again. Hislop admitted at the front of the programme here that he loves Cadwell Park, he loves Alton. Alton is the next race on the calendar. He is going to be, Steve, formidable. There's no question about it, and as exactly as you said, Barry, it's all about consistency. Hislop is fast, but it's the team behind him. You've got to finish the races, you've got to put it together. It is very much a team effort in that Paul Bird Monster Mob team, and everything is just about perfect for that bike, and Steve Hislop likes things to be perfect, and then he is virtually unbeatable. This is the battle for seventh, and sitting in seventh place, number 11, Carl Harris, that's John Reynolds' Rizla Suzuki teammate, being harried by the number 75 Hawk Kawasaki, a 750cc superbike uh, rule Kawasaki, if you like. He climbed all over Reynolds at Thruxton in the previous race. He's now doing it to Carl Harris, and look at that! 1,000cc versus 750cc, and on the inside, Glenn Richards moves through to relegate Carl Harris, a little bit of a twitch because he went in very hot there on the front brake, left his braking to the last minute. He's now up to seventh place. Ahead of him, the Kiwi Simon Crafar. So it's an Antipodean affair in sixth and seventh place in the race. And clearly number 75, Glenn Richards, will be looking ahead to see if he can wind the Virgin Mobile Yamaha of Crafar in. And there is Crafar disappearing from view, round Mansfield and into the foot of the mountain. Here they come. This is the battle for third now, and that's John Reynolds, number one, Rizla Suzuki being chased by six, Rutter on the Renegade Ducata. Now, Rutter is all over the back of him. He's looking for a way past, but it's so narrow around this circuit, it's very difficult. And we spoke about the damp conditions. There's only one real good dry line. It's getting better and better. Sparks flying from Rutter as he powers his way out of Barn Corner down over the start and finish line and he'll look I guess down the straight part of the circuit the easiest place to pass on this circuit here at Cattle Park is into Park Corner but you've really got to get a good drive out of Charlie's and it's Charlie's where we are now the bump as they go in you can see the bikes jumping around and again as they exit Rutter getting on the powers he powers his way down he'll look to the inside I suspect but I don't think he's close enough this time around well, you said the circuit was narrow, Stephen. There's nowhere illustrates the lack of width more than the part they're on now. It is extremely narrow at the top part of the circuit here, almost defining one clear racing line. Very few passing opportunities as they squirt down now towards the gooseneck. Once they come out of Chris Curve, into the gooseneck. This is the resurface bit. One or two of the riders complaining about the bumps and ripples. Rutter's on the inside. That's a cheeky move, but he makes it stick. A look over the shoulder from Reynolds. He's thinking, who the devil is coming next? Rutter now up into third place. Round the left-hander to the foot of the mountain, Michael Rutter. So it's Ducatis in the top three slots. And we always said the Ducatis were going to be nimble here. And none more so than this, the number two Monster Mob machine, as Steve Hislop powers his way down out of Barn Corner. Black lines being left there over the start and finish line. There's the yellow flag indicating starting the final lap of this Motorcycle News British Superbike Championship race one. Hislop has a comfortable lead again up into this long, long corner, Charlie's corner. Coming out of here, you can see the resurface. That's the dark part there. Then it goes on to the old part of the circuit as they power their way down the fastest part of the circuit.
Well, it was interesting, Steve. There was definitely a twitch from the rear wheel of the Monster Mod Ducati as Hislop went onto the new tarmac and off onto the old tarmac, where old meets new. There's definitely a ridge. Ridge or not, Hislop on his way to the first win here at Cadwell Park in a 25-point position. He came here with a 19-point lead. His closest rival, Sean Emmett, on the Virgin Yamaha is down in fifth place on target for 11 points, so things stay the way they are, and there is absolutely no reason why they shouldn't. Hislop will emerge from this race with a 33-point lead. Robbed of the title last year when John Reynolds and he collided at Rockingham, he's looking like the champion, but of course we still have six races to go. Very much so, still a lot of points on the table as Hislop comes around there, there's no rush at this point. Over the top, they're down into the hairpin. Hislop has it all sewn up here in this first race. Things are looking good for him and for the championship. Well, six races to go, of course, after events are completed here today. We have one more at Cadwell Park. Hislop is going to lift race one here, though. Shaky Burn with a triumphant wheelie is on the rostrum in second, having led, and his teammate, Michael Rutter, completing the rostrum in third place. The Rizzler Suzuki of John Reynolds in fourth. Over 30,000 people have braved grey, damp and cold conditions to come here and watch Steve Hislop win this race, and what a dominant victory it was. There is confirmation of that all Ducati rostrum, Hislop from Bern and Rutter. The rest of the top eight were all four cylinders, headed by John Reynolds, Emmett there in fifth, Crafar Glenn Richards, seventh place on the 750 Kawasaki, and Harris. Gary Mason, ninth place, a great result for the Honda Motor Power Fireblade rider, Mark Burr Ellison, Phil Giles, and in 16th place, Adrian Coates. The gap now 33 points at the top of the championship. Hislop leads Emmett, Rutter burned, Reynolds and Plato could have nailed Reynolds had he not slid off. Well, Michael, well done. A hard-earned third place there. Yeah, you know, I battled away for it and I uh, finally got off John. Uh, these boys just went away, got, got a good start and got their heads down. And I should have done that, really. It was my own fault. Um, now I've just got no way of catching them up, you know, so I really just did my best I could. The best thing for you was in the early, uh, the early laps when Steve Plasier was on Steve's tail and he was riding a bit defensively. You, you were able to get on with business by yourself. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoy the race, to be honest. I mean, I'm surprised. That's a lot faster than I've been on race tyres all weekend and the bike felt quite good. And yeah, hopefully the same again for the second race. Try and get out there in, in the front and try and keep him behind. <laughs> Steve, uh, seriously fast race there. Turned into a bit of a parade for the last few laps. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, Shane got a fantastic start, and uh, for two or three laps, I was really struggling with. I d it was like chatter on the front, but it was coming from the rear wheel. Maybe it was just a little bit out of balance or something. And once I kind of got used to that and could ride around it, I was then able to put some pressure on. And once I got past him, he was close for a long time. And then near the end there, I just put in a couple of laps, 25-0, 25-1, and that broke a second to a second and a half. And I think he kind of must have thought, oh, that's enough. Well, to have a look back at race one, I'm joined by former world champion and current world superbike star, Colin Edwards. Now, Colin, that was a lesson from Steve Hislop of how to do it, really, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it looked like, uh, you know, just an easy start and uh, the weather wasn't, wasn't playing a, a good part in the, in the scenario. So once he got out there, it looked like he just kind of played his cards and when it was time to go, it was time to go. Now, Steve Plater was on his case, obviously, for a while and he had to ride a bit defensively. How much does that slow down a rider, I think? Uh, well, I think... You know, I mean, I know his slop, and I don't, I don't really think he's worried about the guy behind him. He sees what's in front of him, and he goes and gets it. And uh, I think as far as riding defensively, you know, maybe, you know, not, not per se worrying about what's going on, just making sure he keeps it on two wheels, you know, with the weather like it was. And once he was comfortable, he was off. Now, Steve Hislop does have the extra motivation when he's in front of knowing that Shane Byrne is very capable of pipping him on the line. But what goes through a rider's mind when he's out in front, there's no one really on his case, and he's got the track just ahead of him. Well, it's kind of like a, a long run, you know, I mean, you go out and we go out and practice uh, long runs and qualifying or in practice or whatever just to get laps on the tire and you just kind of revert back to that and, and it's just about lap times and, and you're just watching the clock, you know, and as long as you can keep your lap times good, uh, you, don't worry, you don't have to worry about what anybody else is doing. How good is Steve Hislop? Uh, he's good, you know, I mean, I've raced against him and the guy's a madman going into the corners. I mean, I've never seen anybody go into a corner as hot as he does and he gets away with it, which uh, time after time just suppresses me over and over. And, it's, uh, you know, I would have liked to have uh, had him at Brands and, and uh, you know, Silverstone would have been dry, would have been better also, but uh, I look forward to uh, racing with him again. 
Now, the current champion, John Reynolds, on a four, of course, this season. In third place, riding very well, but Michael Rutter was just able to take him. The frustration seems to be pretty clear there with John Reynolds. Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, I'm not a big fan of the rules that they have. I think, uh, you know, if it's 1,000 cc, it's 1,000 cc across the board and run what you brung, do whatever you want to it. And there's just a, a amount of restrictions that, uh, Basically, the restrictions are written so the Twins can still win, but, you know, the, the Twins are going good, but you, you, you got four other factories that are sitting there waiting in the wings that want to win races also. And, uh, it's, I think it's a bit unfair at the moment, but, you know, we'll see what the future brings. On a twisty, tricky circuit like here, do you think the fours can really compete, though? Um, <laughs> it's tough to say. No comment. No, it's, uh, the, the Twins definitely have an advantage. You know, the twisty tracks, direction change, uh, they, they, they're definitely better. OK, race two on its way. A little bit of rain falling at the moment. What are your predictions? Um, well, I mean, obviously, rudder's good in the rain. Um, so it'll, it'll be interesting, I think. I'm not sure if the rain's heavy enough to, to really, you know, cause any, any big problems. But I think it'll probably dry up, you know, if it, if it stays away. If it does rain, I think rudder would be my pick. So rudder and then Hislop if it stays dry? Hislop again if it stays dry. OK, well, thanks very much for that. I've got to fly. I'll see you in the grid in about 10 seconds. Well, you heard what Colin said. He said if it was wet, he fancies Michael Rutter in this race. But it is a dry race. But Colin Edwards, he's supporting you, Michael, I tell you. Oh, well, that's good to know. At least someone is. <laughs> How do you feel about race two, then? You've changed your bike, I believe. Yeah, we've got we're on the, the number two bike. Uh, we had a bit of a problem with the, in the other race. So, um, yeah, it's just, I don't really rode this one much. So hopefully it'll be all right. Um, but, you know, the conditions out there are a bit tricky. We need to get a good start. And uh, it's going to be hard to pass just, you know, just one line and that's it. It does get a bit damp out there. Does it worry you when you get up in the woods? Yeah, it's like it is very wet up that way, and it isn't going to dry out in this race that part. So, yeah, we've just got you know be a bit careful for that part and uh, try and make it hard work around the rest of the track for people to get past you. Cheers, Michael. Thanks very much. Well, Dean Thomas crashed out in race one. He injured his shoulder. He injured it a few years ago. Nothing broken, but they make a decision on Wednesday whether he'll race again at Alton. Now, another man who didn't finish in race one was Steve Place. He's around here somewhere. Steve, only five laps. What happened to you? Yeah, the pace car came out and when it went in, it started to spit with rain a little bit and um, I was chasing his lot around, he was making quite a few mistakes and stuff and hadn't really settled in. Uh, couldn't get past him, I was just quite comfortable behind and then um, must have made a mistake at Mansfield. I didn't feel like I did anything wrong really, but lost the front and down I went. Do you feel you have a bit of a point to prove here in race two? No, not at all, you know, obviously I'll be out there just trying my hardest like I usually do. <laughs> Thanks Steve. Well there you go, over to your commentary team of Barry Nutley and Steve Parrish. Well, it's about to get underway, and what Michael Rutter was saying with the damp track, it is very, very hard to pass as one dry line, as they're all focused, and away they go, trying to keep their weight to the front of the bike, and it looks like Plater gets a great start there. Number four, Steve Plater heads them as they go up the hill into Coppice Corner. Behind him is number eight, Shane Byrne, John Reynolds. Good start from him, and Michael Rutter tucked there in fourth place, but there's a few spots of rain on our camera now. Yeah, there are, and there are two red bikes at the front of this race, and one of them is not Steve Hislop, because he is in fifth. Steve Blater, the number four Yamaha rider lead, so a four-cylinder up to second place, goes another four-cylinder, as John Reynolds, number one on the Rizla Suzuki, grabs second place from Shane Byrne, so the two renegade boys, Byrne and Rutter, respectively, are now in third and fourth place, with the championship leader Hislop with a yellow helmet right on the back wheel of Michael Rutter, who, as we heard at the top of the race, is riding his spare bike. He's not sure how that bike is going to fare. We're not sure how that bike is going to fare, but we are sure that Steve Blater now has a three machine length lead over John Reynolds and Shaky Byrne closing in to reclaim second place as they come up to the mountain section here now and this is the point where the the trees hang over the circuit it gets very very greasy you can just see a dry line now i don't think we'll see any overtaking going on on this section of the circuit until so the race gets underway and it dries out a little bit more coming out the hairpin now the guys go down into barn corner look how wet it is through here through barn corner there is just one dry line as they power their way now over the start and finish line and this second part of the circuit is definitely drier yeah they have to be very circumspect indeed under the trees there but this is dry this is flat out it's very much a race of two parts at the moment shane Byrne in third place closing again on the Suzuki of John Reynolds. Reynolds a little bit frustrated because he was thwarted from a podium position in race one. Desperate to make amends this time. He's in second place, looking strong. Is Reynolds going for the lead here? Takes a good look at Steve Plater, but up the inside comes Michael Rutter. 
Roger, the two renegade boys, he runs a little bit wide, leaving an opportunity for Shane Byrne to claw his way back. They're tripping each other up. His slop number two in fifth place is poised now to move into possibly fourth. Paul Denning, the Suzuki boss there, sporting a new haircut watching his man in second place and going strongly. Well, that was a brave move there from Michael Rutter on his teammate Shane Byrne. Did dive down the inside, push Byrne out wide. Now Hislop has a look as they come into that same spot, the end of the straight. Hislop slips through there. Actually, a neater move. Now we're now looking back from Steve Hislop that Shane Byrne right behind us on the number eight machine. But Hislop is making a move. The track is dry. We know he doesn't like those damp conditions, as Colin Edwards said. He will wait, bide his time, and I think get faster and faster. He's been the fastest man all weekend. Let's look at that. Rutter now down the inside of John Reynolds. There's his team and his wife, Sondrine, looking on with interest as Michael Rutter into second spot, and he's pushing hard to take the lead. Down the inside again. Look at this. Michael Rutter is absolutely flying into park corner to take the lead. Well, in a carbon copy move, Steve Hislop also went past John Reynolds. And this now is the view from Steve Plato as Rutter takes the lead. But behind Plato, Steve Hislop also going past John Reynolds. And there the view facing backwards from Steve Hislop, who now is chasing, chasing, chasing. Because the last thing he wants is Rutter to get away in these semi-damp conditions. He knows his strength. Up to second goes Steve Hislop. Ducati one, Ducati two. It's very much now a race for the lead between these two. Plato relegated to third, but still looking at a strong rostrum position here for Steve Plato on the Yamaha. Ahead of him in second place now, Steve Hislop. Right, we're now coming out of the gooseneck, down the hill to Mansfield Corner, right the way down into second gear. This was where Plato crashed in race one, but everything seems OK at the moment. Now, as they power their way down, Towards the mountain section, you can see those two big Ducatis, the twin cylinder machine, just seem to be able to punch out the corner. Plato is now under pressure from last year's champion, John Reynolds on the Rizla Suzuki. That's the battle for third and fourth spot. Well, we've had five winners in the championship so far this season. Hislop, Emmett, Rutter, Byrne, Reynolds. The only man not running at the front is Emmett. His place has been taken, if you like, hypothetically, in this race, in third place by his teammate, Steve Plater. I bet Emmett wishes he was up there running because it's vital to his championship challenge. Hands in the air. One or two riders, it's damp, it's very damp. We have a stoppage because the rain is falling, albeit slightly, and we will have a restart. Michael Rutter starts in pole position this time because it's a two-part race. They line up in the positions in which they were at the stoppage. Michael Rutter was leading the race, therefore he started from pole, but Hislop has got the drop. The scoring will be on aggregate here at the stoppage. The advantage Rutter had over Hislop was one hundredth of a second, and Hislop looks to me, Steve, as though he's already made good there. He certainly does. Hislop's got a blinding start there, but really Rutter has just got to be right on his back wheel. A big battle going on there for third place between Plater and Reynolds. Plater has the advantage as they go into Park Corner now. Coming out of here, track still quite damp. Look at the crowd there at this motorcycle news, British Superbike Championship at Cadwell. An amazing crowd come to watch these fantastic races. Well, they're certainly being treated to fantastic racing, as you say, Steve. And as the seasons go on, the quality does not diminish. It doesn't matter how many top riders depart overseas. There's always someone there to fill their leathers and fill their boots. Just look how close the action is. But the old master, the oldest man in the race, the most seasoned campaigner, and the most skillful, certainly, it would appear by the way he's riding around here, Steve Hislop. John Reynolds in fourth place knows he's got a close down on the Suzuki, and by his own admission, this has been very much a learning year for him on the Rizla Suzuki. So watch out for Reynolds in 2003 when the old firm is back in business. In second place on the road, already watching that race lead just disappear because Hislop on aggregate is almost certainly now leading Rutter proper. Well, he is just on such good form, Hislop. I don't honestly think anybody in the world, as Reynolds nips through there, Reynolds gets through, and look how close that is as they go up into Charlie's corner. That's pushed Plater out wide, Burns got the inside line, sparks flying there from Rutter's boots, and this is a terrific race here, as again, Burn gets wriggling around there. Plater on the outside, but I think the Ducati will have the edge down the straight, and he's got the inside line. Number eight, Burn has the inside line into Park Corner. Great racing going on here at the moment. Well, take that, said JR. He's in third place on the road. He is ever so hungry. He really wants to salvage something from the 2002 campaign. 
currently lying off the top four in the championship now, Reynolds. The man he's been dicing with, Shane Byrne, leading him in the title chase and not too far behind Yamaha's Steve Plater. So Reynolds needs to get cracking and no one knows better than he. Now, the positions on the road are the positions in the race. They've established really, really good times in this restart. So race leader Hislop, second place it's Rutter, third place it's Reynolds. Well, good times in these conditions is an understatement. Look at the focus on Steve Hislop as he goes through the hairpin. He is pounding away, just faster laps, faster laps all the time. And you can still see how wet it is. We know Colin Edwards is here watching. I reckon even if you brought Troy Bayliss along. Look, there's a faller there, number 19. That's Adrian Coates. He's down and out, up and OK, but they'll have to ship that bike out of the way. Going back to that, even Troy Bayliss, I don't believe anyone can beat Steve Hislop when he's on the form he's in now. Well, Cabwell Park is certainly his own. He's already had three wins in the last three outings here, and this is looking as though he's about to take win number four. Number eight, Shane Byrne, the youngster from Sittingbourne. First time out on a Ducati this season. What a talent he is. I truly believe we're looking at a British champion of the future. We are certainly looking at the reigning champion, John Reynolds, who knows full well the threat of the renegade Ducati rider is looming large in his wing mirrors, if he had any wing mirrors. It's still damp on the circuit, but as you say, Steve, the time's coming down and down and down. Absolutely astonishing. A lot of the world superbike regulars maybe shy away from Cabwell Park. It's not the easiest circuit, is it? Well, it has to be said, there's uh, one or two areas that are a bit tricky, especially through the wooded section. Now, Byrne has a look coming down out of the gooseneck. He's on the inside, but JR slams that door shut as they come out of Mansfield Corner. But there's no doubt about it. The agility of that renegade Ducati, I think, is going to get past John Reynolds. Reynolds doing everything he can, using up all the track wherever he can. And through this part here, we know how damp it is. This is a tricky part to try and pass over the top of the mountain there, in through hall bends as they come through here now. Then it goes over the top of the hill and down into that slow, slow corner, the 35 mile an hour hairpin where we are now. I remind you, the positions as you see them are the positions in the race, and the three Virgin teammates battling there for fifth, chased hard by Carl Harris. Oh, Craper! Simon Craper out of the equation. That means Emmett has been elevated one slot, and points are vital to Sean Emmett, second in the championship. Craper then out. This the battle for sixth place, Sean Emmett being chased down by Carl Harris, and ahead of him in fifth place, Yamaha's Steve Plater. There's Crafar taking the long walk back. He's been consistent, but not quick enough, sadly, this year. No, he really hasn't, but you can't say that about this man. Number two, Steve Hislop, fastest lap, a lap after lap, he's been pounding away, and look at the margin, he's now stretched away. Track condition's really good, and he really has been on top form here at Cadwell Park this weekend. Well, a double win in 2001, and it's going to be a double win in 2002 because coming down towards the checkered flag, Steve Hislop, second win of the day, chased home by the Renegade boys, Rutter gets second, and Shaky Burn in third. What a stunning win for Hislop and the crowd absolutely on their feet. No greater admiration than that from his fellow riders. They cannot believe this man. Well, confirmation of that all Ducati rostrum again. Hislop, Rutter, Burn, Reynolds in fourth, Plater fifth, Emmett got six points for six, and good to see John Crawford there in eighth place, once more back in form. There was a terrific scrap for the lower places. Mark Burr getting the verdict in ninth place. Jason Davis, a good result for the Shark Yamaha rider in 13th. Well, the standings now, the gap, 48 points Hislop leads this championship by with six races remaining, but it ain't over yet. 48 points, clear it. Is it yours now? I'd like to think so. We're going to one of my, well, my next favourite track next weekend, Open Park. If I can have a mega successful weekend there, uh, which I pray for, um, at the end of the day, Mallory can be a lottery anyway with what with that tight hairpin. Uh, and Donington I love anyway so you know it's my kind of tracks from here on in and I've got a good lead on Michael and you know it doesn't matter if Shaky maybe wins a couple of races now I just want to be consistent now and get the points. Well, what a fantastic day for Steve Hislop, doing the double here at Cadwell Park and putting himself 48 points clear at the top of the table. What is that man going to do next? Well, you can find out next Sunday on BBC Two when we will be coming from Alton Park and there'll be live World Superbike action from Assen. I'll see you then. Awesome.